Hello and welcome at chess.com. I am Blooming Green Master Keritza Zelashvili, and in this video, I will show you the best games of Women's World Champion and the first female chess player who was awarded Green Master title, Nona Kaprindashvili. I'll go right away to the examples, and in the end of the video, I'll tell you some interesting facts about Nona. Let's start with our first example. In this game, Nona Gaprindashvili plays with white pieces against Rudolf Cervanti. As you can see, bishop on d4 and the pawn on g2 are hanging at the same time. White cannot guard both pieces, so white decided to trade dark square bishop. Black took g2 pawn as an intermediate move as the rook on h1 is hanging with a check. So black's plan is right after white moves this rook away, to capture the bishop on g7. However, Nona planned something else, but not a passive chess and passive defense. She goes with an incredible two rook sacrifice, queen d4. She gives up one rook with a check and she gives up another rook. And now she makes another incredible move that chess engines cannot even see at the beginning. This is queen f6. Why queen f6? For instance, if white goes with bishop h6, black will answer with f6 and there is no checkmate on the board. Same happens if white goes with bishop h8, f6, and black has too much of material extra and this is winning for black. So for this reason, right after sacrificing two rooks and having exposed king in the center, Queen f6 is the move which wins the game. Uh, we have the end of the game here, black resigned. However, we can see the variation, what happens, for instance, after queen a2. Now black threatens a check. Anyway, white is not stopping here and plays bishop h6. Queen g7 is a checkmate threat. So let's see what happens after several checks, starting with queen a5. Now white has to hide this king and the road is like king on d1 after queen a4, king on c1 after queen a1, king goes on c2, and this is the final check. King simply hides on b1 and now queen g7 checkmate is inevitable. So what a brilliant two rook sacrifice by Nonaga Prindashvili. Let's take a look once again what really happened after bishop g7, black should take this bishop for, for sure, but black went for queen g2 and I think most of us would go for this queen g2 here. Well, uh, hoping for, for instance, if bishop goes on f3, there will be a check and black will try to win this uh, game because black has big advantage. Well, um, instead of this, White went for queen d4, so hard to see this move coming. Also, queen h1 here looks quite tempting. And king d2 is something that you don't really expect, but you expect something bishop f1 to cover this king, which is in fact not so good move because after rook e8, black will um, try to uh, survive. So king d2, black has to now take this rook and queen f6. Another brilliancy here in this game, which simply wins. And black, black cannot save. Black has no chance to save this position and save the king. I hope you liked this example. We're going to see another game by Nonaga Prindashvili. In this game, Nonaga Prindashvili plays with white pieces against Alexandr Blagice. It is black to move, black wants to castle on the short side, however knight on e7 will be hanging. So black decided to move knight away on c6, and this is the moment when everything started with knight h5. Peace sacrifice, this knight attacks the bishop. If black decides to move the bishop away, this will allow white to play knight f6, bishop f6, where white will control all the dark squares, and white will keep Black's king in the center. So instead, black went here, g takes h5 and accepted the sacrifice. And now white comes with 
a very powerful move and another sacrifice, but at this time it is a rook. Well, now after rook f7, black's king is exposed, and if black takes this rook, there will be queen h5, queen e8, and after rook f1, black's king is hopeless and black's king will be checkmated in the next move. So instead of king takes f7, here black played queen e5. Black decided to bring very strong piece in the defense, however, this is not enough. For instance here, the most natural move is queen h5, which captures the pawn and also scans the king over here, threatens some discovery checks. This is winning, but here we are talking about the best games, so in the game white went with fancy line, which in fact forced black to end the game. And after rook f5, black resigned. What's the reason for that? First of all, the queen is hanging, so black is forced to take this rook, and now we have queen h5 and queen f7 checkmate. So from the moment where everything looked quite peaceful, here white found a brilliant sacrifice, knight h5, and then rook sacrifice, and right after queen a5, rook f5 simply ended the game. I hope you liked this game. Now we're switching to the third game of Nona Capital Australia. Let's get ready to see something exciting and extraordinary. In this game with white pieces, we have Milinka Lazarevich and with black pieces, Nona Caprindashvili. White just captured the pawn on b5 and Nona here decided to sacrifice an exchange with queen e3. Black captured the rook, white captured the bishop. After king h3, there is another move to king h1 or king g1. I'll show you that later. But before this, let me show the game. Here black went with king g7. Hard to understand what's the idea of this move, but in few moves we will know. If white takes the bishop on c8, now black has a backup plan with knight f4 check. In case if white takes this knight, there will be a checkmate on g4. So instead of this, white has to play king h4. And this variation leads us into the repetition and the game might end in a draw. So after queen a7, which looks quite natural move, it's a check, black goes with king h6. Black's target is white's king. And black simply wants to checkmate white's king on h3. In the game, white went with queen a3, which makes sense because this queen guards the knight and also looks for some checks on f8. Black plays here king h5. Incredible move! This king simply traps the white's king on h3 and gives no chance to white to escape. So let me show what I mean. After rook e1, which in fact is a blunder, and queen d3, black goes with bishop a6. This is a bishop sacrifice. If white takes this bishop, then we're going to have knight f4 and queen f3 checkmate. In the game, white played here queen d1. It is worth the mention that if queen goes anywhere else, for instance on b3, there will be bishop f1 and queen f1 checkmate. So queen has to remain on the first rank to avoid bishop coming on f1. And now black goes with knight e3, attacks the queen and also supports the bishop to get on f1. In the game, white played rook e3. And Nonagar Prindashvili ended the game with bishop f1 check, which allows black to checkmate the white king in the next move. So that was the game and now let's come back and try to understand and try to figure it out which of Black's move was our favorite. So at this point, after queen takes b5, the most natural move is just to trade the queens and to go into the end game where white has an extra pawn. However, this is not a good option for black and black wants to complicate the position. In this case, if white goes with check on e8, black plays king g7, and there's no more checks for white, so black's king is safe. Well, 
queen takes the rook looks quite logical move after queen e2. Now if white goes with king h1, there is check and check and this rook is hanged again. If white goes with king g1 right away, then queen e3 check, queen c1 and black emerges with an extra piece and the winning position. So right after queen e2, white has to play king h3 and now king g7. You already know what's the idea of king g7 to get the king on h5 to checkmate white's king. Well, here queen a7 check looks also quite a normal move. We have seen what happens if white takes this bishop. So after queen a7, king h6, queen a3 looks logical move, and king h5. At this point, black is already having very good position and white has to make only one move, which is rook g1. Very hard to spot this for a human perspective. Engine suggests this move, only one move, which saves white's game, hoping to cover the king if there is a check. So instead of this, white went with rook e1, and in the game after queen f2, this is already very, very hard position for white, and it's simply impossible to hold it. So the game ended with knight e3, and here bishop f1. In fact, there is also queen f1 and bishop f1 to checkmate in this way. I think it looks very nice. So um, I don't know which one is my favorite move. Is it king g7, king h5, maybe bishop a6. If you have your favorite move in this game, please do let me know in the comment section. Now we're switching to another game of Nona Kaprindashvili. In this game, Nanaka Prindashvili is with black pieces against Alexander Schnapek. As you see, the king on b8 is in danger as white threatens queen e8 or rook e8 checkmate. Here, black played queen c1. This move is not out of desperation, but in fact, it is a well prepared move. For instance, queen takes queen, bishop now takes b2 pawn. In case if white takes the bishop, there will be a checkmate on the first rook. In case if queen goes away, then black can take the rook. And this position, two rooks versus queen, is better for black because these rooks are very active. Bishop will come on c5 to annoy white's king. And black's king is very safe. In the game, instead of all these variations, white went with rook a8. And after king takes a8, Queen c6 and knight e4 to activate the pieces. But anyway, like I got the bishop on this diagonal and then doubled the rooks on e file. This game lasted longer and eventually it ended in a victory of black. So queen c1 here, you think with white that you're about to checkmate your opponent next move, but here we have the move which in fact changed the story of the game and ended in victory of black. Now we're about to get to the our last game of Nonaika Prindashvili in this video. This is our final game in this video. So here we have Nonaika Prindashvili with white pieces, Tatiana Vujanovic with black pieces. The position itself is uh, very challenging for both sides. Uh, they have castled opposite. White has open h file and very good attack on the king side. Black also opened up the sum files on the queen side. Now the threat is b takes c3 and then to win a queen. So quite complicated situation. And here Nona comes up with an idea to sacrifice a queen by bishop captures a bishop. So the idea is that if black takes the knight with a check, king goes backwards, then black takes the queen and after bishop takes the knight, the checkmate on h8 is inevitable. Black can save this position. Well, in case if king takes the bishop right after bishop takes uh, on g7, then white's queen comes all the way on h6 with a check and then with a checkmate. So this is not working either. In the game, Black decided to take the knight with a queen and give it check and also try to trade queens. 
white went king b1 and after taking the queen on d2 here white decided to ignore this queen and to take the knight and keep this thread on the board however black now can take the rook rook takes the queen is only move here and at this situation black has extra rook however White's threat is very simple, rook h1 and rook h8 checkmate, and there is no way to escape without giving back some material. For instance, black have to play king f8, and this happened in the game, rook comes on h1, and now this is a threat, king cannot run away, it's a checkmate anyway, and black is forced to give up the bishop. Bishop covers the uh, file, rook takes this bishop, and now black tries to run away. The game ended now after rook h7 and rook f8, the pawn on f7 was hanging, white played bishop g7 to attack the rook and the moment the rook leaves f file, white will take the pawn on f7, then will take on g6 and here white has enormous material advantage, so black decided to resign here. So another queen sacrifice here by Nonega Prindashvili, starting with bishop takes g7, and after queen takes on c3, here we had bishop f6 winning move. And very nice idea just to come back on h1 and threaten checkmate. Some interesting facts about Nonega Prindashvili. She is fifth women's world champion and the first female chess player who was awarded Grandmaster title in 1978 by FIDE. Another interesting fact about her is that she is still competing in chess tournaments. At the age of 80, she has won a lot of senior titles. There is perfume called Nona and the bottle is in shape of chess queen. Chess Palace in the capital of Georgia, in Tbilisi, is dedicated to Nona Kaprindashvili. Another interesting fact is that her favorite sport is football and she likes to watch football games. Her favorite football player is Lionel Messi. During the chess tournaments, right after the game, she was enjoying to play pool uh, game, that's a table game, also known as billiard. And she has challenged a lot of strong opponents and also celebrated victory in that game too. Another interesting fact, you probably know about that, is that her name appeared in the Netflix series Queen's Gambit. Nona Gaprindashvili and her lawyer's team sued Netflix for false information and they are claiming for 5 million USA dollars for damaging her honor. This is part of the information of Nonaga Prindashvili and also her best games that we hope you like and enjoy. So please subscribe to the channel and come back for more interesting games and the videos. I am Booming Grandmaster Keri Sasalashvili and we will meet each other soon.